Sirs killed us. Well, it did. Yeah. No, the worst <laughs> increased risk. Oh, sure, sure, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. What does increase risk have to do? Uh, something X causes increased risk of CBD. Are you going to stop doing X? Uh, How much? Exactly. That's that's what we're trying to get what to. CBD? Uh, oh, it's cardiovascular disease. Oh. Um, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said CBD. And I said, I don't think I could go for some increased risk of CBD now. just one serving of processed meat every day, I'm gonna have a 40% higher chance of having a heart attack. That that feels quite a bit more. Uh, one, piece of one serving of uh, processed meat. Is this true? Yes. At least in epidemiological studies. Well, it depends on type of meat, right? You know, white meat, red meat. Uh, it's specifically like all forms of processed meat. So anything that's been mechanically separated or like has the preserved out of systems, stuff like that. Bacon, sausage, uh, uh, deli meats. How much is one serving? Um, one serving is about 50 grams, so uh, a little under two ounces. So one serving of this per day is what uh, Averaged, yeah. Average. Yeah. And it's easy, because it's easy to eat like four servings, right? Of course. So if you eat four servings twice a week, there you go. That's averaging one serving a day. That's Damn. unbelievable. I don't think 50, 50 grams of meat per day will just about, I'm like, everybody gets CBD. <laughs> <laughs> if we were, I, I think we would have a lot more. We, we do. do have it's a lot. The most, it's the most likely to kill you, besides traffic accident. Well, right now, traffic accident is the most likely to kill you. But as you get older, CBD is hands down the most likely to kill you. Well, I, I don't know, maybe in this society, but back in Europe, uh, I think a lot more people eat a lot more meat than they have a lot. Like, they, I guess they don't eat nearly as much processed meat. The specifics yeah, are that the example are kind of beside the point. Really. Yeah. Like, it's an interesting thing to Okay, yeah. But yeah, no, the idea is that it took me 30 seconds to Google this, and that if you're trying to establish a habit, that you should try to quantify, spend that, you know, a few minutes trying to quantify, like, what is the actual benefit that I'm getting out of this? Quality yeah. adjusted life years. Yes. So it's not quite quantification that you're talking about. Because, I mean, like, you can talk about the actual increased risk, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even just saying, like, 20... This is still pretty abstract, right? 20% yeah. increase. increase. Well, I think it, it, isn't in, it isn't in quality adjusted life years. I so think we don't really know how. To I, th I think maybe. Oh yeah, you can multiply through. Maybe generalize life. it to not. I think. Kind of ensuring the results hit you on all levels: intellectual, emotional, and motivational. Because increased risk kind of you know it gets me on an, like on a very abstract intellectual level, but your second method gets me on. Several levels at once of motivation and yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, Whereas if you like, if you convert this to like, you know, imagine five copies of yourself, and now, you know, two of them have heart failure. Okay, so I, I think maybe what happens is um, I have a, <laughs> I have a sub agent that responds particularly strongly to this claim. Maybe not everyone has that, but the the point of this overall is to convince your sub agents. So yeah. try to figure out what is the actual objection that some part of you has to this uh, thing, and see if you can answer it fairly cheaply. As in the case of like a Google search, and just recognizing that there is a sub agent that objects to it is, a, is 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 a good first step to getting rid of it or you yeah know, trying to it. trying to figure out like what is your actual rejection. Uh, like that's a, uh, oftentimes figuring out like okay what exactly is bothering me about this like is often enough to get over it. Yeah, by itself. Yeah. Many of these, um, it's often the case that one of them is a sticking point, and as soon as you figure out what the sticking point is, significantly easier. Not always like you know 100% smooth sailing because that would be expecting that would be another failure mode, <laughs> but see, much much easier time. Um,
So going back to goal factoring, um, why am I doing this? Like, how does this mesh with your other goals? Do you actually want to be doing this? Oh, and um, quantifying what constitutes success. So getting getting healthier, what constitutes success? I don't, not dying in 40 years? No, like <laughs> set up a, a shorter term goal than that. I want to be able to run a mile in X amount of minutes. That's a much more uh, salient goal for uh, not only our purposes. Not only shorter term, but also um, quantifiable, right? Yeah. How much you let yourself or at least the mirror. Directly measurable. measurable. And, and yes. so you might object, you know, you say, uh, you know, running a mile slightly faster isn't necessarily linked to you know long term longevity. That's sort of beside the point. Like, right. you have you have this plan in place to get fit. You've decided that a sub goal of getting fit is is running slightly faster. Um, you have to set up some sort of sub goal. I mean, otherwise it won't get done. So you might in the future decide that wasn't the ideal way of you know, improving my longevity through health, but it's a hell of a lot better than not trying at all. Yeah. And hey, now you can run. Yeah. Uh, th I think that's a, a uh, having sub goals that are worthwhile in themselves. That's not exactly in this category, but I think it's kind of that's a true. way to improve things. Ensure sub goals have intrinsic worth, intrinsic value. I'm going to put this like under the uncategorized. Sub yeah. Like I, I find like for exercise, I need to pick something I enjoy doing at the moment because otherwise, there's no way in hell I'm going to do it more than twice. But if it's something I enjoy doing in mode, even like some small part of me enjoys, you know, running, there is some part of me, you know, ancient hunter gather, whatever, that likes the feeling of running. That's why I can actually run at times. Right. Yeah. Not all of me actually endorses me playing DDR at great lengths, but <laughs> some of me does. <laughs> What's a DDR? Dance, Dance yeah. Revolution. Uh, the arcade game with the arrows. Pink, the arrows. <laughs> I missed that whole thing. That's, that's a fine detail. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's how you distinguish DDR from DDR clones. Because <laughs> <laughs> like other people are like trying to catch on the success of DDR, but they don't do the. Uh, oh, you said clones. Yeah, I think it's clowns. What? <laughs> 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 I have a lot of DDR forms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was going to go meta now. Um, is there anything from our initial list that we haven't really covered? Um, I think <laughs> the brutalness of plans, possibly. We didn't yeah. really get into. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think I think that's definitely something that could be. Yeah, I mean, when do you when you decide to replan instead of continuing a plan that seems like it's failing? How do you incorporate flexibleness while maintaining concreteness? I mean, you have to fit your plan in with other priorities. So. Yeah. Like, I don't know. If, hmm. I'm trying to think of some scenario where you might die if you fall if you fall through if you follow through with the original goal. But I'm, I'm <laughs> we have some wasting. Still want to be um, your plan, a car you trip and the world goes on? Mount Everest, but there was a big storm that you were like, no, I must follow through with my goal. And then oh, yeah, 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 that's, there's been, yeah, we're about deciding um, as part of your plan, when am I going to reevaluate? That's, uh, mm -hmm. scheduling reevaluations. I've heard that that's, that can be helpful, you know, once a week reflect over what you've done, how you're doing, you, whether you're accomplishing what you want. I think we should have another meet up on goal factoring because a lot of this stuff can be okay. folded into that and it's awesome. I agree for that. It seems uh -huh. like reevaluating off schedule could be another failure. Too much worrying about right. yeah. whether it's worth right, right. Well because that's yeah, that's an easy way to convince yourself to stop doing the thing that you kind of don't want to do. Yeah, I think we said before trusting the process. So like you can set yourself up, yes, I'm gonna reevaluate in a week or two weeks. But while yes. I'm doing it, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Execute on it. Uh, handing off the agency, kind of. All right, the calendar says I reevaluate on Friday. I'm not allowed to worry about it right now because the calendar says Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'd like to make more examples. Um, okay. Reset 
setbacks. Um, did we talk about overcoming temporary setbacks? Like, yeah, like accepting failure as part yeah. of it. Um, Maybe it plan, have a plan in case of failure. Plan B, plan C. Doesn't necessarily have to be. Oh failure. yeah, plans, plans B through Z. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I, I think that goes into robustness, right? Let's yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um. There's, of course, this whole uh, discussion about being stubborn versus being resourceful. Like so personality at, at traits? What, at what point do you stop you know, hitting your, your head against the wall if that wall is Right, if your goal is to say run an eight minute mile, it has to be if your time has been the same. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's also, yeah, reevaluation because prog prog progressing along your sub goals. Or it's um, in a tube or whatever, yeah. So there's a saying that uh, there's a very tiny line between, or the, how does it go? There's a very, very tiny line between stubbornness and uh, persistence, or there's something like that. Like, it's stubborn. Oh yeah, I can so, do that. So, so you can yeah. be stubborn. Yeah, you can be very persistent to the point of stubbornness. <laughs> so first, I was going to go over some habits that help us build habits. <coughs> um, to give people who don't have any habits they're currently working on some ideas. Uh, well, first, I got to build the habits. Set. Build the habits. Build the habits. <laughs> you don't have to. Um, Lob is not allowed in the building. <laughs> uh, so wait, how would you phrase what you said before, Pepe? Um, uh, committing, to, committing to process. I said you have to obey your like habit stuff, like your problem. Um, like <coughs> getting in the habit of always doing what is you of what an alarm says to do, or your calendar says to do, or to-do list says to do. Right, put it on your calendar. Your repositories of control. <laughs> I can practice yeah. setting some really small goals, but then like following them to the letter. Yeah. I mean, it's easy enough to actually do yeah. um. Oh, researching the benefits, the possible benefits of a possible habit. Meditation seems interesting. I haven't one tried to quantify the uh, benefits yet. I should probably get around to doing that to motivate me to do it more. How do you know when you're succeeding? Um, when you Your blood pressure goes down. I, I tend to feel more relaxed and I do this. It feels a lot like a perfect nap if it happens very well. <coughs> so there's a definite, maybe not quantitative, but a qualitative measurable difference. There are actual noticeable feedback things that you can get while meditating. But it depends on what you're doing as to what kind of feedback you actually get. But I would also imagine your goal is not to be good at meditation, but you're doing meditation is not one of that biggest accomplishment. But also, I've heard of some people using like ECG machines like hooked up to them, and they can actually like yeah. physically directly see even though meditation is most often used for uh, stress relief, right? And I think the problem there is we should organize our lives to get rid of stress altogether, not to have that and then try to relieve it. It's like eating hamburgers and then trying to lose weight afterwards. It is exactly an eating meter, I'm afraid. If not that's the only purpose, you might also want to improve your attention skills. So we've got 16 people. Um, I wanted to have us break up into groups of four, I guess. Um, we have this space, we have whiteboards over there. Whiteboards in that conference room. Can white, is this one off limits, someone using this? I'd leave it, maybe. Okay. Um, and the whiteboard over there. So um, don't don't use any whiteboards over here that are actually that actually have stuff on them right now. But I think 
they're just kind of the last point. So I don't know. What else is there? Mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily need a whiteboard, I think, but it helps. Yeah. Um, hey, Matt, how do you get people to break into groups? Um, break into groups. Or um, I'll, I'll want to determine your speaking levels. OK. One. Two. Three. Next Matt. Four. So uh, fours over here, um, threes over there. Wait, what are we discussing? Um, we're going to talk about habits and like if you're trying to build a habit, you know, using the methods to like what's a possible failure mode, uh, what's a possible like way to overcome it. Um, well, whoever, whoever has the most pressing habits. I'm a one as well. You're a one. I'm also one. One. Okay. What is it? Victoria. Victoria. What's your name again? Alton. Alton. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alton. Mm -hmm. We only have three ones. Is that true? I'm sorry? Pepe! Want to be a one? Oh, never mind. This guy's one. Okay. I'll be a one. Cool. Okay. What's your name? Vlad. Vlad? Vlad. Vlad. Oh, Victoria. Uh, I don't think I know how you list your name. Ukrainian is that one. Do we Okay, so. So, does anyone have habit that they are trying to build at home? I'm studying JavaScript. Okay. Uh, are you successful? <laughs> I'm averaging about 1.5 times a year. Okay. Well. Okay. What would you like to see? Hmm? What would you like to see? Right? Yeah, once a day. For at least 20 minutes. Usually if I start with 20, I'll do at least two to three times. I've definitely noticed that. Like, I, I, I kind of, I want to do push-ups every day, but mm -hmm. I might. I haven't made concrete go about it uh, because it's a low priority task, but generally speaking, it's technically, you know, 10 push-ups a day, but it's either zero or 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the average 10, right? Um, except it's not as common as not as, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, I'm Melanie, by the way. Vlad. Uh, so yeah, I think that's definitely something, a way to, like, consistency. Uh, Hold on. We have 25 minutes left. Oh. Mm. Right. Is that really applicable to push-ups? I think, I think no, you would, yeah, you would die. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. 
you have to push up for 20 minutes, you have to either do it really slowly or do a lot. Slowly actually makes it harder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Make sure you do 10 within the 20 minute period. Um, okay, so that's one way to get consistency, do a timer, have something reminding you. Um, so I think the calendar idea was a good one. Yeah, and I haven't, I've been using Google Calendar a lot, but not doing everything it tells me to, like we were talking about, doing about a third, but now I'm at least reading through each thing, even if I don't do it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe have a high priority tag or something, and mark a few things high priority, and make sure you always do those, and then, so first only have one high priority thing a week or two a week, and then slowly build it up as you can handle it. So that way, it, it's kind of, um, I'm, I'm, I'm picking this up from dog training, where mm -hmm. there's certain commands that are kind of standard, and then there's now commands. And basically the idea behind now commands is the dog is trained to always, always, always follow them. And the, re the way you do that is you use a much higher value treat, mm -hmm. and you only ever do it with treats, except when you need it. And so basically, the come command is when you just, you know, hey dog, come over here, you know, I want to pet you. Uh, the come now command, you only give the treat if the, the dog does it right away? No, no, the come now command is a different command. Mm -hmm. And you treat it instead of, say, with a treat, you treat it with, like, a piece of meat, you know? Mm -hmm. And you use that one when the dog is in the street and is about to get hit by a car, mm -hmm. you know? It's the, so basically the idea is, is that there's a, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening that you need to have in your Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. But you have a special thing that means you don't get to skip this one. Yeah, I can code it red. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So color coded or something, and you're not allowed to skip that. Mm -hmm. And make it make it minimal at first until you're used to you know oh red means I have to do this. Uh, and maybe yeah, I think that could definitely. So yeah, maybe color coding, prioritizing, organizing your time a little bit could. That's well said. Do you have one as well? Uh, sure. So, uh, I have a goal of like, meditating three times a week on average. Um, I do have it on B-Minder and I have been like, I have been following it, but I find that I often end up doing it when I, like, it's really late and I'm tired, or like I find that maybe the quality is kind of, um, that's not as high as I would like. Okay. You're distracted or what do you find? Yeah, I get distracted or too tense or just kind of too tired and I find myself falling asleep. Uh, these days I've been doing more like walking meditation. Okay. Um, Tell me more about the other things you have on B-Minder, I'm curious. Uh, a bunch of stuff, so... Because that's, uh, more, that's more than uh, myself, I don't know about you guys as well, but uh, of consistently following through with, I imagine, incremental goals too. Um, so I have uh, actually something I recently put on there was like points for going to sleep on time, where on time is by midnight. So basically, yeah, I have a okay. bunch of like incremental goals, like okay. uh, like take a shower, brush my teeth, sh shut my laptop, and. Uh, oh, you actually managed to put in for all of those things for shut off yeah, your yeah, laptop? Yeah, I, I didn't put in like separately. I just like I get a point for each of those things, and then like at the end of the day, I put in how many points I get. And, oh, I see. And That's a total. Whole, okay, I get each point only if I do it by midnight. I think I think that's the thing definitely I could work on. I um, I have a habit of doing things before bedtime and postponing mm -hmm. it. And yeah, at like school that wasn't school. a terrible issue because mm -hmm. I, all my classes were late enough that I could get enough mm -hmm. sleep. But now that I'm going to work at you know, seven eight a.m., mm -hmm. I'm feeling the effect. And I so definitely there. I definitely need to get a plan together for making sure I get enough sleep. Yeah, like I've. I've had this problem for like years and years. I'm just kind of really not feeling willing to go to sleep, and like finding it really hard to get, kind of get myself to do it because it's like oh, it's kind of so it is boring to like <laughs> stop doing whatever. There's so much more that I could be doing instead yeah. of sleeping. And like I'm an evening person, so in the evening I usually feel more energetic. Yeah. Than, like, yeah. Morning. Yeah. Same, same. So what it sounds like you guys want to consider is medafinil. Um, yeah, I, what? I haven't taken oh. it up for I'm just going to turn it off. What? What time did you get now? Oh. Except for on the Silk Road.